Welcome to Macro Monday on Investec Focus Radio SA, a podcast about what's driving global and local markets. I'm Chris Holdsworth, Chief Investment Strategist at Investec Wealth and Investment. Every Monday morning, I'll update you on key developments from the past week and what you need to know about the week ahead. If you'd prefer to watch a video with the graphs and charts I referred to in the podcast, just go to investec.com forward slash Macro Monday. Good morning. This week, we're going to be having a look at what's happened to global markets. We'll have a look at some consequences of higher yields in the US. And finally, we'll look at that inflation print which came out in South Africa last week. We're going to start off with global markets. It's unequivocally tough out there. Other countries that we track, all of them have had pretty negative returns for the past one and three months in stark contrast to the 12-month return. So there was a strong patch around about eight to 12 months ago. And since then, returns have been either flat or lately negative, and that's pushed down the, the latest numbers quite materially. In an environment where equity returns are weak, like we're seeing now, one would traditionally like one's fixed income component of one's portfolio to provide some degree of protection. So we should have positive returns from fixed income, and that hasn't happened this time due to much higher yield. So equities have been weak, fixed income has been weak too. The only shining light of late has been gold. So it's been a very tough environment. We have been positioned conservatively for some time. We've been expecting a slowdown. We continue to be positioned conservatively. While times have been tough recently, we expect the times are going to continue to be tough for the foreseeable future. Even after the recent pullback, the U.S. equity market is still expensive in our view. We still think that earnings forecasts are too high, particularly in the U.S., and we still expect that the U.S. will shortly go into recession. So for those reasons and a few others, we are risk off globally, that is positioned conservatively, and I expect we're not likely to shift in the immediate future. One of the reasons we're concerned about growth is the leading indicator. The leading indicator in the U.S. has been down again. It's been down for 18 months in a row. It's not often the case that it's down for that amount of time. And traditionally, when it has been down for this amount of time, the U.S. has gone into recession. The leading indicator is down 8% year on year, and that's pretty close to the sort of level where you start to see a recession in the U.S. Now, U.S. GDP growth is out this week. That is for Q3, and that number is likely to be quite strong. The consensus view is that the U.S. economy is growing at over 4%. The Atlanta Fed GDP now number is actually even a bit above that. But it's important to note, this is backward looking. The backward looking data is pretty good. No sign the U.S. is in recession based on the Q3 data. However, the leading indicators and a range of other indicators suggest to us that the U.S. is likely to start to slow from next quarter. We don't think that that is fully in the market. Now, in this environment, yields have gone up in the U.S., both at the short term and at the long end. And the U.S. 10-year bond yield is now getting close to 5%, and that's led to a couple of consequences, which we're going to run through shortly. But first amongst them is that U.S. yields have picked up more rapidly than a range of other developed markets. And one of the results of that is, strangely enough, at the moment, you can lend money to the U.S. government at a higher rate than to the Greek government. It doesn't often happen, but U.S. yields are currently above Greek yields, despite all the risks that's typically associated with Greek bonds in an environment where there is a slowdown. So you can see that while bond returns have been pretty poor of late, it's now getting to the point where U.S. fixed income offers value, certainly our view at the moment. Another consequence of higher yields in the U.S. has been mortgage rates picking up. The U.S. 30-year mortgage rate is now near 8%. That's the highest rate that we've seen in 20 years. And the obvious consequence of that is fewer mortgage applications, more Mortgage applications have rolled over materially. They are very low by historical standards. And should mortgage rates remain at these levels, we expect mortgage applications are going to continue to fall over. In this environment where mortgage applications are falling over, there's a vast number of homes currently under construction in the U.S. And that's dealing with some of the delays still from COVID. We've got 1.7 million homes currently under construction in the U.S. That's the highest number that we've seen since the 70s. And given that homeowners with mortgages have largely fixed their mortgages, the people with fixed mortgages don't really want to sell. So there's very limited supply coming from existing homes, but there's lots of supply coming from new homes. At the moment, you're looking at about eight months worth of supply currently on the market. And given the vast number of homes currently under construction, we're going to see that increase for new homes. Existing homes, as I say, supply continues to be quite tight. Another consequence of that is that new housing starts are actually starting to slow at the moment in the U.S., and that's a key leading indicator for the U.S. economy. So the net result of high rates is that we are starting to see some consequences in the housing market, and that's just another reason to expect that growth is likely to slow 
in the US. Switching to China, the Chinese GDP numbers came out last week. They beat expectations by pretty sizable amounts. Chinese economic activity is pretty strong with growth running at about 5%. That's well above the consensus forecast of four and a half. And if we scratch a little bit and look at the underlying data, retail sales were strong, industrial production was strong too. And in addition, we know that there is more support currently in, in the pipelines too, which suggests that Chinese economic activity is likely to pick up quite materially over the coming nine months or so. There are still issues in China, particularly in the housing market, where house prices are down again month on month. But broadly speaking, it does appear that stimulus efforts from the Chinese authorities are gaining traction. Lastly, on South Africa, having a look at that inflation print, which came out last week, it came out of 5.4%, which was in line with the consensus forecast. We've updated our model and we've plugged in a pretty sizable fuel price cut next month. Based on spot prices, we do a cut of around about two rand a litre or so. Of course, that could shift a bit over the coming week and a bit or so. Anyhow, so we plugged in that decline and based on our model, we see inflation getting down to around about 4.7% by December. But for the foreseeable future, staying within the band, which should be quite reassuring for the Saab. We do expect that inflation forecasts for both consensus and the MPC will be cut over the coming few months. Our numbers are lower than both of those. So we expect that those numbers will come down. The next MPC meeting is only at the back end of November. It's probably too soon to be penciling in a cut just yet. But we do expect a cut from the MPC in Q1 next year. And that's quite different from consensus with the general view is that the MPC will only be looking to cut towards the back end of next year. And that's where we're going to leave it for this week. That's all for this episode. Do you tune in next week for more investment insights from me, Chris Holdsworth, and the Investec Wealth and Investment team. If you haven't yet added us to your podcast feed, you can subscribe to Investec Focus Radio SA wherever you listen. And please take a minute to rate our podcast so we can surface this content to the broader investment community. If you want to see the graphs that are referenced in the podcast, you can watch a video version of this recording at investec.com forward slash macro Monday. The views expressed are those of the contributors at the time of publication and do not necessarily represent the views of Investec Wealth and Investment International and should not be taken as advice, guidance or recommendation. Investec Wealth and Investment International, a member of the JSC Equity equity derivatives, currency derivatives, bond derivatives, and interest rate derivatives markets, an authorized financial services provider, and a registered credit provider.